Well, good evening, everyone. And I see you're all uh, studiously looking through your sheet. That's good. So everyone picked up a pink sheet and signed in, right? Perfect. Um, my name is Bob Hurdle. I'm one of the staff members here at St. Lads, and I'm going to be working with the confirmation candidates this year. Um, so glad you could be here. Um, what we want to do tonight is uh, talk a little bit about confirmation, talk a little bit about what it means to be a sponsor, and then probably most importantly for you, we're going to review our basic expectations or what we're asking of the sponsors so that you know your job well. And then lastly, we want to give you uh, the materials that we gave to the kids so that you can work with them as we go through the year. So that's what we want to do. And we'll do all that within an hour. So glad you could be here. Um, just to get a sense of who is here, um, <clears throat> where are my confirmation sponsors? Who's, who are sponsors? Great. How many of you have been uh, a sponsor before, either here at St. Lad's or at another church community, parish community? All right, a couple veterans. Great. Uh, where are my parents who are standing in for a sponsor tonight? Okay. Great. Now, you guys have two important jobs. The first job is to hand off the information and to do that in a timely fashion. The harder part of the job is going to share with them, how can I say it, the inspiration <laughs> with which I'm going to try to talk to our sponsors tonight. Because um, this is a very special and wonderful opportunity uh, for you sponsors, um, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. But uh, your job is not just to give the, the, the sponsors uh, some information, but uh, Fire them up, get them in passion as well. So, um, great, great. Uh, before we get into our prayer, let me start with a, a, a story from scriptures. Or let me ask you: uh, How many of you know the story of Moses and the burning bush? Does that story sound familiar? Get us started. What's, how does the story start? <laughs> Moses. Now, this is before he's Moses. <laughs> you know, Charles and Heston Moses. Uh, Moses is tending sheep for his father-in-law. Okay, then what happens? Yeah, he, he sees this bush aflame, but ironically, it's not being consumed by the fire, and it catches his imagination, and he approaches the bush, and a voice comes to him from the bush, and what does the bush say to him? Anyone know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it does say Moses, but in addition to the Moses part. Anyone remember the next line? He says, take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. And if you remember nothing from tonight, please remember that story because that is really the backbone or the spirit with which we want to talk about your role. Um, these candidates have invited you into this journey of faith with them. And you are standing on holy ground. Now, I don't know anything about most of you, but let me just plant an image. Most of us Catholics are very private about our faith. The candidates have invited you to share that walk with them. They may never ask another human being to do that with them in their life. A little, do you feel that? This is important. It's unique. It's grace-filled. All right, so we are staying on holy ground. So uh, that's a great backdrop for us as we begin our conversation. On the back side of your sheet, or on one side, I guess it depends what side you're looking at. It may not be the back side, it might be the front side. But there's our opening prayer. And if you could, we're going to use this together. And I'm going to ask you folks to be my side A, and you'll be our side B. And let's get through this together. <clears throat> On the day of confirmation, Bishop Perez will instruct us concerning confirmation. 
It will remind us of the day of Pentecost and the anointing of Jesus in the Jordan River and of our own receiving the Holy Spirit on the day of our baptism. He will then lead us in prayer using these or similar words. Side A. All powerful God. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon us, our guide. Give us the gifts of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, understanding, courage, knowledge, reverence, and right judgment. Fill us with the Holy Spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. Complete the work you have begun and keep these gifts active in our hearts. eager to do your will. May we never be ashamed to proclaim to all the world the presence of your Son. May we us one in the Holy Spirit and bring us to joy with you. We pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. Now before we just set that prayer aside, I want to just draw you back to it for a minute. There's a very good chance, and yet, unless you're my age or a little older than me, that these were the very same prayer, this is the very same prayer that was prayed over you the day you were confirmed. This has been in use by the church since 1973. Take a second and look at this prayer. Now, because confirmation is a sacrament that we only receive once, this, there's a likelihood that this prayer has only been echoed once in our lives. But as you look at it, let me ask you, would this prayer still have relevance in your life today? Yeah, it sure does. In fact, there shouldn't be any day that we would awaken that this prayer wouldn't have uh, meaning and substance. Every day we could wake up asking for God's Holy Spirit to be with us and walk with us, um, be our helper and our guide. Fill us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, the wisdom, knowledge, courage, reverence, and awe uh, in doing God's work. Um, help us to recognize your will in our life and eager to do it, etc. So this prayer, I think, is wonderfully a wonderful example of a lot of the prayers that we offer as church. They don't just pertain to the golden moment, if you will, that day on May 10th when the candidates will be standing before Bishop Perez and they will hear this prayer uh, presented and shared in a special way. But it's a prayer that really resonates and can walk with us throughout the course of our life. So, good. A any other observations or comments on the prayer? No, good, good. Uh, we'll come back to that prayer actually a little bit later. Uh, let me, I'd like to hear from you a little bit before we get into uh, talking about the program in general. Um, who has been the people in your life who have touched and colored your walk of faith? Who have been witnesses of faith in your life? Anyone? Just Your parents, okay. Even though sometimes we like to fight with our parents... <laughs> the truth is they are certainly the ones who probably, for most of us, brought us to baptism and because of that uh, began our journey of faith as a, in our Christian Catholic walk. Who else? Friends. Some friends. Sometimes we have friends who, who are faith-filled people with whom help us shape our walk. Who else? A grandparent. A step-grandfather, even a more unique... How many of you are grandparents? How many of the gra sponsors are grandparents? Yeah, good. Good for you guys. <laughs> That's right. Some of you might even be great-grandparents. Indeed. Indeed. Um, any other people who are examples of faith in your life? Right now, I have two nephews. In what way are they uh, echoes of, of faith? Okay. Oh, how nice. Well, thanks for sharing that, because a lot of times we always think these witnesses have to be older than we are. They don't need to be. No, that's true. Yes. Yeah, teacher. 
pastors, uh, you know, significant others. So there's a lot of time. None of us woke up one day and said, boy, I wish I could be a Catholic. You know, we were introduced to the faith and we grew into that faith and have been nurtured in that faith. As one person liked to say, uh, faith is caught more than it's taught. And, uh, and, and that's, that's a good, a good thing to keep in mind. So there are lots of points of contact or uh, 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 influence in our walk of faith. Now, since we're all here to talk about being sponsor, um, what do you think is, uh, what, what's the role of sponsor? What's what, uh, what's the, what, what do you, what do we want from you guys? <laughs> Why are you here? What does it mean to be a sponsor? A role model? It's a good phrase. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. Walk with them during this process and be supportive. Absolutely. Anything else? Yes. Help them discover what their faith is about. Okay. I like that. Uh, are there any other images? Uh, yes, you may be an instrument to make some connections or awarenesses of God in their life and their faith walk in the church that they've never been aware of before. And you might be that point of, of uh, that pivot point that makes all the difference. to that, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay, to be a, a guide. I like that. Uh, lots of different images, and they're all very accurate and, um, uh, and real. A, a phrase that I always like, if I could plant this with you all, is that um, because we are involved in this, if I could use the phrase, the journey of faith, moving from point A towards God, points B, C, D, wherever, um, sponsors. I, I'd like to think of you as our uh, co-journeyers. We're not asking for you to be perfect, to be saints, to be teachers. Um, you don't have to have all the right answers. But what we are looking for you, we would like you to be a person of faith. When we ask the candidates to select somebody as their sponsor, there are a few requirements that are, the church asks of, that you'd be of a, a age and that you'd be sacramental uh, uh, confirmed and things like that. But we said, you know, first and foremost, pick somebody that you respect as a person of faith and somebody that you might be able to talk with about your faith. And if they've asked you, they must see those qualities in you. So that's a great place to begin. Great place to begin. So be a co-journeyer. And as we go through the calendar, please know that anything that we ask the candidates to do or to participate in, you're welcome to do it with us and with them. Okay, you can be very much a tandem project. All right. Um, good, thanks for those sharings. Um, you should have a sense of where we want to go or what we're trying to accomplish during this year of preparation towards the Sacrament of Confirmation. And so I have a little overview statement on confirmation printed in the, uh, on that sheet there right in the middle. And just let me take a second to highlight a few of those phrases. Confirmation is first and foremost an initiation sacrament. So it's about belonging. It's about membership, about being a part of the church, the body of Christ. And so pretty much every time we get together, um, one of the themes, one of the uh, aspects of our gathering will try to raise that question. What does it mean to belong to the, the church community? It's an initiation sacrament which celebrates the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit. Confirmation is not just about getting a ticket punched or... Um, 
got it, and then, you know, let's move on. The Holy Spirit is never passive. The Holy Spirit is always God in action. It's empowering. It's uh, uh, engaging. It's promoting. It's compelling. Um, if you think of the, a sailboat, the Holy Spirit is like the wind in the sails, <laughs> whoosh, making something happen, moving us along the road, being that body of Christ that we're called to be. So it, uh, the church is not a passive entity. And the Holy Spirit is what makes that happen. Uh, I always wish sometimes we could use the word church like a verb. We often think of the word church as this house, this gathering place. But a church in a better sense is this people of God who are on a mission, who have a job, if you will, uh, appointed by God to accomplish. Uh, St. Paul uses this great word. He calls us ambassadors for Christ. God is, it were, appealing to the world through us. Think of that. That's really a dynamic image. So the Holy Spirit is, is not a passive thing. It's an empowering experience. And it enables the church to be God's instrument. The church is most clearly seen as this body of Christ when it engages in its four basic jobs. We worship. We learn our faith and share it. We build community and support, fellowship with one another, the people of God and we reach out to those in need. And so those four phases, if you will, uh, really very much in, encompass or embody the work of the church. And because confirmation is going to focus on what it means to belong to the church, all of those things will be part of our conversation. How are we worshiping? How are we sharing? How are we building community? How are we uh, being the body of Christ? Does that make sense? Those will be our focal points. Uh, we're not so much a class during our preparation process. We certainly have some material that we want to pass on and hope that takes root, but that's not our, our main focus. Instead, we're trying to connect, we're trying to invite, we're trying to uh, uh, expand their imagination and vision. Um, I, I was telling uh, the group the other night, I said... Uh, the candidates are in an interesting place in their life. Up until this point, pretty much, what was their command? What was it that we asked of them? Shut up and be still. <laughs> Sit in church. Don't create, a, don't, don't create any uh, chaos or havoc. I mean, truly, isn't that a lot of what we did? We want to turn that 180 degrees around in confirmation conversation. You're now growing into the church. We want to exercise your presence, uh, expand your understanding, encourage your participation. So it's kind of just the opposite. Is that? Okay. So that's, that's where we're going to be at during our confirmation process. And as you're going to see in a minute, we're asking you to help us as these co-journeyers to walk this walk with us. So having you on board really helps with that. Kadok, any, any com comments or uh, other uh, thoughts on that? All right, excellent. Well, on the half sheet there, let's look real quickly at the responsibilities that we're going to try to highlight in your ear with us. And then we'll turn to some of the specifics. The number one thing we ask of you is to offer prayer on behalf of your candidate. All right. There's no greater job that you could do as a sponsor than to be praying for your candidate in a regular uh, way. And before we leave, and make sure I don't forget to do this, folks, so remind me if I don't do it, I have a little prayer card that I want to give you that has that prayer that we use at the beginning, the prayer that Bishop Perez is going to use at the confirmation, and I'd like to give it to you. It's kind of like a bookmark. So you can tuck it in your mirror or put it in your car or put it in your reading material. And whenever you encounter it, you can just take, you know, 30 seconds and offer a prayer on behalf of your candidate. And, of course, other ways to pray, too. But we'll give you one particular tool. Number two, and this one's kind of interesting, we would really invite you to take your own growth of faith seriously during this year. And if you could... Be a witness of what it means to continue to grow in our faith. 
Um, our candidates are not stupid. They look around and they ask themselves the question, gee, what does it mean to be an adult member of our church? Well, what do most of the church members look like? I mean, really. Uh, and I'm not trying to point a finger or make anyone feel guilty or not, but it's not an unfair statement to say most of the adult members of our church community go to church maybe a couple times a month. Most of them are not in any kind of a, a formal program of like a Bible study or a faith-sharing group. Um, most have not been on a retreat maybe since high school or eighth grade. Uh, some do some volunteer work. It may be with the church, but some not out, outside of the, in the community. But many do not. Um, we're, we're, we're often kind of hands off. And so here we are this year asking the candidates to do a monthly reflection and to go to extra classes and to participate in mass and, and all these, uh, do a service activity and write a faith statement and all the other things that we have that you'll see in their schedule. Um, and they look around and say, how come I'm the only one doing all this stuff? <laughs> if this is what it means to belong to the church, shouldn't we all be doing this? And the answer is, well, yeah, we should all be doing this. So, but anyways, you can be a great witness of that ongoing commitment to grow by doing something yourself in a special way. Maybe get a book and begin reading on prayer learn a little more about that, or volunteer in your church, or sign up for uh, a Bible program or something. I'm sure you, won't, you can find things if you look. All right? Number three, and this is really concrete, we're going to ask each of you to uh, generate some kind of a conversation, some interaction at least once a month with your candidate. It could be a phone call, it could be a FaceTime, it could be a person to person at Panera's or something, however you want to orchestrate it. But somebody besides us up here at St. Lad's talking with the candidates about what's going on in this process. What are you working on? How are things going? Any questions? Are there assignments that we could be working on? Um, et cetera. In fact, actually, I'm going to give you this, the packet that the kids are using so you'll know everything that they are working on and discussing or are responsible for, and you'll know all the timetables as to when they need to be done. So you kind of already have a ready-made tool to generate some conversation with the candidates. Okay? All right. One last point on that one. At the end of the year, when we do our a year in evaluation and ask the kids what were the things that we did during our preparation process that seemed most uh, fruitful for you, almost without exception, the number one noted item is their time with their sponsor. So going back to that image uh, with Moses and with the feedback from the candidates, please, again, re recognize how valuable their invitation for you, towards you, I should say, to you, is take advantage of it engage with the candidates don't be afraid to talk about God or ask about God or ask about church with the kids and again we're not expecting you to be the answer person or to be the saint who does everything perfectly just be a co-journeyer okay all right number four when you see the calendar, this will make more sense, but please know that anything that we're sponsoring or holding for the kids, you sponsors are welcome to participate and come to uh, in any way that you want to. Uh, we always kind of caveat that by saying, if you want to come to our, our group meetings, you probably should let your candidate know just to get some feedback from them, because they might say, oh God, please don't come. You'll be the only one there. And in some regards, that's true. But if you do want to come, which is great, because I think it shows a wonderful willingness on your part to be supportive, you can sit with the, the adults <laughs> who are there and participate kind of tangentially <laughs> there. But, uh, but I, this goes also then for any of the assignments or the reflection pieces. We're not trying to test the candidates to see how well they've mastered some material. We want them to be engaged, and we're inviting them to, to do that. And 
Um, as it said in the scriptures, Jesus sent them out in twos. He didn't just send them out on their own. He sent them out in twos. So having a partner of faith is a good thing. And you're going to be one of those partners. <laughs> so don't be bashful. Now, having said that, are these your assignments? And the answer is no, they're not your assignments. These are the assignments that we're asking for the candidates. But at the same time, we would love for you to be as engaged as you want to be. Does that, does that make sense? Um, there's two activities that the candidates have. I specifically mentioned the service one here. Uh, I should also have mentioned the second one, and I will in, uh, verbally. Uh, during the course of the year, we're going to ask each of the candidates to complete some kind of a service activity. It's not a requirement of hours or anything like that. It's entirely self-generated, so it's whatever the candidate wants to do. Um, on behalf of somebody else in the name of Jesus. That's kind of our requirement. Suppose they want to go to the nursing home. I'd like to, there's a lot of nursing homes in this area. I think I'd like to do that. That'd be a nice thing to do. There's no eighth grade boy that I know who knows how to take that next step. <laughs> Which home? Do I just show up one day? Do I call the activity director? Do I find out what kind of needs they have and how could I plug into them? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, your input would be great. <laughs> your input would be great. You could think of the activity yourself. You could do the activity with the candidate if you want to. But having said that, in the springtime, we're going to ask each of the candidates to make a simple report to their peers about that activity. And if you were involved, you could come right along and do the report with them. So, just so you know, that's that invitation. Similarly, uh, we're going to ask each of the candidates to craft um, a personal faith statement. Um, now, this is really, really a challenge for them. Heck, it's a challenge for most people. Um, I would suspect most of us would wrestle with how, where do I begin and what do I, how do I do this? But we want them to focus in on some aspect of their relationship with God or their relationship within the church community and then fun, find some way to express it um, so that it can be a witnessed or experienced by other people. So some of the kids will write an essay, some might make a collage, some have done artistic things like a, a painting or a, a poem, um, things like that, a mobile. Whatever, some way though that it can be visualized or experienced, expressed publicly, okay? And uh, when I give you the kids' packet, the candidates' uh, packet of work, there's a page in there that describes it, You'll, so you can get a better idea of what that is. But don't be afraid to ask questions with the candidates. Uh, this is not something that they could decide, gee, on Saturday it's due, so here we are Thursday night. Let's see, what should we work on? <laughs> it really is something that's going to require uh, some previous steps, a little more uh, tilling of the soil. <laughs> so, so please, again, don't be afraid to engender that. And, and on that line, I should go back to item number three, the monthly conversation. Um, I was remiss in not pointing this out, although it's probably common sense that we're already aware of. No eighth grader is going to call you up and say, hey, we didn't talk yet this month. I'm dying to have this conversation, okay? I'm going to go to class on, uh, at church here, and Mr. Hurdle's going to ask me, you know, if I did this and this and this, and so I really need your input. So obviously, if this is going to happen, we need to depend on you to get your calendar out and say, well, let's see, if the kids are meeting on November 10th, on November 3rd, I'm going to call Billy, and we're going to set up our conversation or have our conversation. So kind of the same idea, though. We invite your participation as much as possible. All right, any questions on those? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm just curious. Is there anyone else here besides me who has no idea who their sponsor was when they signed? Okay. I haven't got the slightest clue. All right. Yeah, well, how about that question? How many of you know A, who your sponsor was for confirmation, and B, do you still have some interaction or contact with them? 
So a lot of hands have gone up, but not everyone. I have not seen my sponsor since the day of my confirmation. And it was because we picked a friend of the family, and then two years later we moved. And so while I was, I'm sure, a wonderful man, a very good Catholic man, they just were no, lot, no longer a part of our life. So sponsors sometimes that are picked within a family context, at least you always maintain some family ties. It's, never, it's not a bad idea. Some of the, some of the candidates picked their uh, siblings, which is amazing to me because I, I would never have picked my brother, but um, it worked for some of the kids. In fact, uh, two of my children picked a sibling. They looked at their older sibling and said, they're living a life of faith that I, I respect. So. But. All right, uh, yeah, Donna. It's really whatever they want to do. The question is, do, do they, if the candidates set up some kind of a service activity, do they do it just one time, or do they do it multiple times? Uh, and I would say it's going to depend on your activity. It's going to be depend on your activity. To go back to, say, the nursing home, one of the things that the nursing home, the activity director might suggest is, you know what, I've got this wonderful guy. He's in room you know, 202. He just lost his wife. And you know what, he's lonely. And he would really welcome somebody to come and visit him every Thursday afternoon for a couple times. Well, that might be more than one session. No. But it's, 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 a, it's given to, it's, it's really whatever you want. Some of the kids do tremendously involved and engaged uh, activities. You know, they get involved with a habitat for humanity or they do some kind of a, a clothing or food collection and distribution or they get involved with some... Uh, animal rescue kind of thing and uh, it involves hours and hours and hours and other kids um, for whatever reason you know pick a more streamlined you know sh I'm going to shovel grandma's driveway when it snows you know so different people have different gifts and they're going to explore those and express them differently we, we don't we're not trying to evaluate what they did to say gee this is more meritorious than this we want to give them opportunity to explore the gifts that they feel like they can, they can explore and have an opportunity to do things on behalf of somebody else, you know, in the name of Jesus. So that's really what we're trying to work on. And that can be accomplished in a lot of different ways. All right. Number six. Now, this is a red-letter one that I want everyone to pay note to those. So candidates, or excuse me, sponsors or parents here for the sponsors. On November 10th, we're going to have a special night of prayer right here in this space after the six, uh, 5 o'clock mass, so, on, so 6 to 7. And we call it the hanging on to the faith. Our main participant in that event, or that evening, are the candidate and sponsors. So sponsors, if at all possible, clear the decks on that date and try to be here. The idea behind this prayer service is really a simple one, but very real. A relay race. Is everyone familiar with the idea of a relay race? We've got four runners, one baton. The one person runs, at the end of their leg, they pass it off to the second person who runs, who passes it off, who passes it off. The race is certainly won or lost by the speed, but what other piece is important? Don't drop the baton. <laughs> and we use that as kind of this image in this little prayer service. And it, I think it epitomized nicely the role of the sponsor in a confirmation process. In many regards, you represent or you are a symbol of the community passing the faith on to the candidates. You're the person with the baton, and you're handing it over to the candidate. And as part of that service, we're going to ask each of you sponsor, excuse me, each of you sponsors, to have about eight to ten minutes of just one-on-one -on -one time with your candidate, and we're going to ask you to share 
from a personal perspective, something about your relationship with God. Uh, why you pray, why church is important to you, um, a time when you felt especially close to God, a time when you recognized God working in your life. Um, what we're not looking for is a preaching. You need to, you better ought to. It needs to be a personal reflection of faith. And I'm going to pass out a sheet in, in a minute here that just gives some guidelines if you're not sure how you would want to approach that. Uh, some of us do that real easily and normally, but for many of us, that's really a challenge. <laughs> so I'll try to give you some, uh, some ideas to help you craft it. The good news is you're talking to an eighth grader. You don't need a lot of sophistication. Be honest and be faith-filled, and it will work. Okay, okay. Now, candidate, or excuse me, sponsors or parents, if a sponsor cannot be here that night, we would ask that the sponsor write a letter, basically sharing some story of faith, that we could then give to the candidates during that time of sharing. So while um, Billy has his sponsor and they can talk over here, Mary, whose sponsor couldn't be here, can be given her sponsor's letter and she can be engaged with her sponsor through the letter. Does that make sense? And on, on the sheet, as well as in the packet for the program, um, we have some directives in there. Don't mail the letter to the kids. They'll read it first before they come here. So mail it to us here at St. Lads or mail it directly to the parents. If a candidate sponsor cannot be here that night, November 10th, we'd ask maybe could one of the parents come so there's a person here with the uh, candidate. Okay. Everyone got a sense of what we're looking for on May 10th? In fact, why don't I pass out this sheet right now for you? Could I ask you to help me? I'll go down one side if you'll go down the other. I care, I'll give you one, dear. You got it? You are most welcome. You're okay. And you can look at on this on your own. And these, are, again, are just guidelines. You, you can follow your own uh, track if you'd like to. If I could, while you have that sheet, if you look on the back side of this sheet, we are video recording tonight's presentation. So if there's a sponsor for you parents who are here, if your sponsor is not here, you might want to direct them to simply go to our website. And after you send them the materials, they could have the materials at hand and go to our website and just watch the video and uh, participate in the conversation just as we are right now. And they might find that helpful. But this will direct you how to get to it. So the stlads.org, look for that bullet, the, the button that says homily or videos. If you click on this, this is the page you'll be looking at and then just look for a special broadcast for t the confirmation meeting. Yeah, you could email. You could email the uh, the letter for sure. Yes, and we'll treat it confidentially. We're not interested in your story. The, uh, we were interested in getting it to your candidate. Okay, doke. And if there's any of you who can't figure out how to do the tenth or make it work, please talk to us individually because uh, we want we don't want to miss it. All right, then the last thing on the sheet here, uh, number seven, as the calendar permits, or your schedule, I guess it should say, permits, sponsors are also invited to join us at the right of election, which will take place on the first weekend in Lent. Um, if you cannot be here, don't panic. This is not a red letter um, assignment. If you can be here, that'd be great. 
what will happen in this uh, right of election, at the 5 o'clock mass, the candidates will be formally presented to the community. And part of that process will involve a dialogue between the pastor and the parents, the pastor and the sponsors, the pastor and the community, and of course the pastor with the candidates. And then the kids are called forward, they sign the book of election, we support them with special prayer then. It's done generically. So there's no one-on-one -on -one with the candidate and the sponsor. So nobody would ever know if my sponsor is there or not. Because Father's just simply going to say, Sponsors, I turn myself to you. Do you believe the candidate's intention is sincere? And you're going to hear this amorphous, Yes, <laughs> from, the, from the assembly. Um, so if you can be here, there's a place for you in the ritual. If you can't be here, it's not a problem. Any questions on the right of election? All right, good. Oh, good, Kim. All right, what I'd like to pass out then next, um, well, here, in one second. On the dates here to, to the left, on the bottom left-hand corner, I'm going to give you the brochure, and it has all these dates already articulated. The orientation meetings are what you're at now. The handing on of the faith is that one in November that we just talked about. The right of election is the one we just mentioned in Lent. The rehearsal or the service reports, uh, if, you're, if you want to, you're welcome to participate in those. And then, of course, at the time of the ritual itself, the confirmation and rehearsal on May 9th and May 10th, uh, your participation there is what it's all about. So we're, <laughs> we're hoping you're there for that. I'd like to give you now uh, the brochure that we gave to all the confirmation candidates and their family so that you'll see all the different dates that they have and since we've extended the invitation for you to participate in whatever you'd like to it's good for you to know these dates when you when you look at the uh, the calendar you're going to see that some of the dates have in parentheses a letter S, and those should be the very same dates that you find on the bottom of your one, two. They should be the very same dates that you see on the bottom of that pink sheet. Those are the ones where the sponsors have some particular uh, role. The uh, dates that are marked LG, that just simply means large group, will be meeting with the candidates in a large group. The ones in November and December, uh, we are in small groups focusing on the mass, and uh, the rest of the things I think are spelled out. So. Okay, about once a month. Uh, I, I always, uh, when we set up this process, we conceived of basically two activities a month. There's the, some public gathering, the large group or a small group or the shadowing, what have you and then the service or the uh, uh, reflection piece that we give the kids in their individual packet. So nobody should be spending more than, you know, two, two hours a month is more than enough time to, to embrace this. Now at this time I'd like to give you the packet that we've given to each of the candidates. And this is the, uh, the full, I don't know if you need this or not, but you're welcome to it. This is a full description of the candidates, assignments, and any of the resource materials that we're making available to them. You need three or four. Got it? You guys just need one down there, or how many do you need? All three? And here, let me get some more. Do you have some more, Kim? Oh, good. This the last row in here too. If you flip to one of the, you know, a couple pages in to one of the monthly uh, pages, you'll see on the right-hand side of the page there's a column, usually in a box. We call it a monthly assignment or a journal assignment. 
This is where you can get your uh, ideas for your conversation.